An entitled Karen and her spawn ruined my London West End experience of seeing The Lion King all in one night after both of them made so much noise, kicking seats around them and kicking me in the leg in the process, despite the security and staff members telling them to be quiet multiple times. But at the end of everything, I got the last word in and I gave this entitled Karen a piece of my mind. Here's what happened. I'm a 22-year-old male and about five months ago, I booked a ticket to go to a London West End show of The Lion King. I was so excited when the day finally came to go and watch it, so I took a train to go into London. Once I had gotten into the theater and sat down with about 30 minutes until the play started, there was a lady who looked to be around 40 years old, we'll call this lady Karen, as well as a girl who looked to be about 10 years old, both of them just sitting next to me. About 20 minutes later, when the play was about to start, I heard them talking about me. Not trying to be nosy, I just stayed on my phone and tried to ignore them, but curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to listen. And to be honest, they weren't exactly trying to talk quietly. The Karen said, Be careful around him. He's a thief. I can't believe they let people like that in here. The little kid nodded and went back to going on her phone. I will admit, I did sort of look like a thief as I had fully black clothes on, but not wanting to cause any problems, I just shrugged it off and ignored it. About five minutes into the play, the Karen and her daughter were still talking and being on their phones despite being told by the staff that they need to stop. They were then told a second time that they needed to stop talking and put away their phones. The child was obviously very bored as she kept moving her legs, sometimes kicking me, and most of the time kicking the chair in front of her. The person sitting in that chair was obviously annoyed and told theater staff what was going on, and they were told again to knock it off. This kid either didn't hear it or just chose to ignore the staff because she kept on kicking me as well as the person's chair, even while being told by the staff to stop it. It was only when they were threatened to get kicked out that this entitled Karen said to stop it in the cheapest and most insincere way that you could possibly ever hear. And it was all just a facade to try and convince the staff that she really meant it. She said, Darling, please listen to the nice man and stop it. Saying this with a big fake smile on her face. Once the staff went away, she finally obeyed this entitled Karen. But because she didn't specify what not to kick, she then began kicking me in the leg. By this point, I was annoyed and my patience was wearing thin. So I told her in a very polite way, can you please stop kicking me? And with another huff, she finally stopped. The next hour went by, and she sat there sulking, and only stopped when the 15-minute break between halves of the play ended. But the next hour and a half was an absolute living nightmare, as this Karen acted in a way that I literally did not expect in the slightest. This entitled Karen's child was constantly moving, constantly talking, and making annoying noises. I told her politely to please stop again, and when she didn't, I reluctantly reached over to the Karen and prodded her on the shoulder. Her head snapped around and looked at me with a death stare. She said in a sort of quiet shout, what? And I said, sorry to bother you, but your daughter's making noise and she's bothering me and most likely many other people around us. Can you please tell her to stop? She then said in some kind of way, you can't tell me how to raise my daughter. And I replied by saying, well, like I said, she is bothering me and probably some other people, which is straight up ruining the experience. So can you please tell her to stop? This entitled Karen snaps back by saying, I don't tell you how to raise a child. And at this point, I had just given up. The staff couldn't stop them, I couldn't stop them, and the entitled Karen did not care. So I just stopped before I created more drama, and I tried my best to enjoy the rest of the play. When the play had finished, and everyone was walking out, I was extremely annoyed. I'm usually the kind of guy where it's hard to annoy me, but by this point, my patience had flown out the window. I went up to this entitled Karen and gave her a piece of my mind. I told her how rude she was being and how annoying her spawn was being as she was bothering me the entire time. I left in every detail about what she did and said it loud enough for everyone around me to hear it. The cherry on top was when the staff didn't do anything to stop me, they just watched with a satisfied look on their faces. I finished off by saying that this entitled Karen should do a better job of raising her kid. They then left before I could say anything more. But it begs the question, am I the jerk for putting this entitled Karen in her place? I don't think you're the jerk at all. I mean, you gave this person so so many opportunities to try and reel their spawn in so that they can try and get them to stop doing whatever they're doing. I mean, they're actively kicking people in the leg as well as kicking chairs around them. I mean, that's just completely inappropriate. Like, come on. When you go to the theater, you gotta be attentive and you gotta be paying attention. But most importantly, you gotta be quiet. People paid good money, especially with the London West End. Those tickets are not cheap. I mean, we're talking about like potentially hundreds of dollars. So it's really disappointing that this lady didn't see that, hey, maybe I should reel my kid in and make 
make sure that they're not ruining the experience for everybody else. So honestly, you didn't do anything wrong in my opinion, as that entitled Karen definitely had it coming, especially with her poor attitude, as well as her terrible parenting skills. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Am I the Jerk for getting in a fight with my husband and regretfully using personal information against him just to try and win the argument. So I recently got into a huge argument with my husband on Christmas Day, and we have not spoke to each other since. This is the longest fight we have ever had, and I don't see it going back to normal anytime soon. The weekend of Christmas, my husband and I changed our holiday plans due to him having mild cold symptoms. Even though it was not COVID, we decided to not expose his elderly grandma and decided just to stay in. It was an easy discussion, as we had hosted a Christmas party with his family the weekend prior. After discussing, we agreed to have my parents and two brothers come over Christmas morning. However, leading up to Christmas, he was upstairs in his gaming room for 12 plus hours Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I could hear him laughing, screaming, and interacting with his friends all weekend long. When I would ask him to come downstairs for lunch or to spend some time watching a movie, he would become aggravated and annoyed, as if I was inconveniencing him. He would say he was not feeling well for it. This is something that happens very often outside of this weather. For Christmas, he refused to be a part of any pictures or unwrapping anything, as he says he wasn't feeling well. When my family had finally left and he had gone upstairs to play again, I realized that my family did not close the door properly on their way out, and it was just completely open. The front of our house just faces the street too, by the way. I began to panic because we have a small dog who is very precious to me and is my world, and after calling him multiple times and searching, I couldn't find him. As I continued searching, I started shouting to my husband that there is an emergency and I can't find our dog. I needed his help and he just shouts back to me, I'm busy right now, just keep looking, I'm sure you'll find him. At this point, I'm running down the streets and looking through rooms in a panic. All the while, my husband has not disconnected from his video games. About 10 minutes later, I'm able to find our dog and he is safe. It turns out, he had accidentally wandered into our laundry room and he couldn't get out. And this is when my husband comes down downstairs and says, see, I told you he was fine. Well, I was just in a fit of rage and panic. And I tell him straight up that I'm so tired of being his number two in his life. All his time is just spent playing video games and any of his free time is hardly spent together with me. This is impacting our relationship in many ways. I explained to him that I never knew this hobby of his would put our relationship in his number two priority. He then comes back at me by saying that he didn't know before marrying me that my decorating and preparing for Christmas would be such a priority. And I felt so incredibly hurt from this, as the reason I do this is to try and create memories and some kind of traditions as a couple. This was the third time he'd thrown buying a new Christmas tree in my face during an argument, even though it was his idea to buy one from Costco this year. I was so hurt that all my efforts were seen as a waste. In my anger, I tell him to not worry about it, and that this would be the last year I would ever decorate or try to make an effort for the holidays ever again. I then begin to angrily take down all the decorations in the house and packed everything away. I tell him that I never wanted him to throw the tree purchase in my face again and I packed it away to return it to Costco. As I'm trying to lug this 100 pound 12 foot tree box into my car, my husband and I began to tug the box back and forth between the two of us. He actually began to say that if I return this tree, he's going to pack his things and he's going to leave. And when he actually said this, this threw me off my guard, as he'd never said anything like this before to me, ever. I leave the tree in the doorway, and begin packing up other Christmas items around the house. Meanwhile, I can hear him pulling out a suitcase and begin packing. I felt so angry and distraught, but I didn't say anything to him as he was doing it. He put his items in his truck, and then comes to sit in our home. After 30 minutes, I guess he decided to not leave after all, so as a result, he goes back upstairs to continue playing video games. The very reason the argument started in the first place was because of the video games. After a couple of hours of him playing video games and out of petty anger, I used the Wi-Fi app to restart our internet just to try and mess up his gaming. And trust me, I know this was petty and stupid and I do regret doing it. But this upsets my husband so much and made him so angry that when he confronted me about it, I just froze in fear and I said it wasn't me. And by the way, I'm a horrible liar and he knew right away that I was lying. He was so angry that he did decide to leave. He got in his truck with his items, turned off his location on his phone, and drove away. I 
called him four times, and on the last time, he picked up. I asked him where he was, and he claims he was going to spend the night at his work parking garage. We began to argue on the phone again, and long story short, the last thing I said to him was pretty rough. I told him that I always thought you were just like your dad, but it turns out you're just like your mother instead. Now, for some context, he had recently opened up to me with more details about his childhood, as well as telling me about his absent mother, who left him when he was only 14 years old. I knew as soon as I said it, that this would cut him deeply, and I regret saying it, and I feel horrible for even thinking it. He refuses to speak to me, and the last thing he said is he feels like he never wants to open up to me ever again. I don't know what to do or how to proceed from here, as everything going on is such a mess. Yeah, this is definitely a sticky situation. You got into an argument over the Christmas decorations, as well as him not helping out when you lost your dog, and I think that's pretty normal and it's pretty average for the most part. But if I'm being honest, it really seems like both of you are at fault in this situation. You both seem to escalate this in such a way where things became pretty toxic overall. It went from arguing about him not helping out with finding the dog to then him throwing in your face how much the tree cost in the first place. And then he left because he didn't like the fact that you messed with the Wi-Fi, which then led to you bringing up childhood trauma just to try and get back to him. That comment alone took it way too far. Not to mention the fact that he's being super childish by saying, I'm going to leave and like packing his bag. I mean, come on. That seems incredibly extreme. So unfortunately, I think you're both the jerk in this situation. The way you both reacted to some kind of conflict between the two of you was incredibly toxic. And I think apologizing to him first and foremost and saying, hey, I'm sorry for saying something about your mother would be a really good place to start because that, in my opinion, was way over the line. And in my opinion, it absolutely should not have come into this argument. An entitled Karen gets upset with me when I seat them at their table at the restaurant that I work at. And despite doing my best and trying to do everything right, she still made some snide remark at me and pretty much ruined my night. And now I really feel like a jerk. So I've been working in the fast food and restaurant industry since I was very young. I've dealt with some nasty people. I've had drinks thrown at me. I've been called terrible names. And I've had to ask my manager when I can get off work so I can try and avoid some angry customers. All of the negative moments like these replay in my head all of these years later. And every time all I can think about is what I should have done differently, even when it is clear the other person was the antagonist. Well, tonight was another time. I work at a chain restaurant as a hostess. Tonight was busy and I expected it. At one point, we went on a wait and the wait was dwindling down, but a table of five just came in and I told them that the wait's going to be about 15 minutes. They said they called earlier to try and reserve something, but we don't take reservations. So I said, uh, let me just go check on that. My manager told me that they did call and to tell them five or 10 minutes as a wait time. So I did just that. I rushed around to find them a table, but they wanted a booth, even though I had a table placed out for them. But you know what? That's the way it goes sometimes. I was in my groove. There were so many people at my host stand. I just offhandedly asked if any kids menus were needed and was instead met with stares from the adult party and silence. So I can pretty much chalk that up as a no. Time passes by and they sat at a six top directly behind my host stand. I guess I noticed them looking at me, but I thought it was because I often turn my head around and I noticed that it could appear like I'm looking at the table behind me, which is one of the reasons why I try not to sit people right behind me. Time passes by and I walk to my stand to grab a towel or to put menus away or anything else along with the job. And this is something that I've been doing my entire night. The table is now leaving and one of the women says to me, by the way, I'm 25 years old. I don't need a kid's menu. And her tone of voice made me feel like she really was hurt or offended. I apologized and I honestly did mean it. She looked me up and down like she was disgusted and said, I bet you are. And then they just left. She death glared me through the window the entire walk to her vehicle. And I looked back at her and shook my head and watched her laugh. I can't stop thinking about it. I wish she had just let me explain myself. If I had looked at her while I was asking the question, you know, the one that I admit was pretty stupid in hindsight, then that was honestly a coincidence and one that I was truly sorry for. I was truly on autopilot. And like I said, I was sorry for it. That is until she came at me that way. I just wish I could have prevented that interaction. Now there's some stranger out there with her family who thinks I'm a complete jerk and I obviously triggered some kind of insecurity within her that I wasn't even aware of. But clearly I should have just known about it. But you know what? Sometimes no matter what you do, you're always just going to be the bad guy. I got to be honest. I don't think you did anything wrong in this situation. That lady clearly had some kind of chip on her shoulder and you just happened to say the thing that was going to upset her no matter what. She came into that restaurant in a bad mood. You didn't do anything wrong. That is literally all on her. She may say she's 25, but she might 
might be one of those individuals who looks like a child of some kind and they just look really, really young. And obviously you didn't do it on purpose. You were just on autopilot. And I know exactly what that's like. You're seating people down, you're bussing tables. And during the busy time of a restaurant, you're just moving around and trying to get everybody going. So yeah, your autopilot response when a group is coming in is to ask them if they have anybody who's a kid who needs a menu. Like it's not that offensive. They could have easily just said, oh no, we're good. We don't have any kids with us today. Just a bunch of adults. And that would have been it. So I honestly would not sweat it in the slightest because that lady is the one with the problem. And in the end, you were literally just trying to do your job. My girlfriend is so needy and clingy that it's draining me personally. And I honestly don't know what to do. So I may sound mean or incredibly rude, but trust me, I love this girl so much. However, her attachment and neediness is honestly draining me. I constantly have to validate her emotions and looks after her everyday episodes of her asking me if I love her, as well as if I feel like one day I'll leave her for whatever reason. And all these other questions like, am I beautiful? Stuff like that. I know that girls do this sometimes, which is totally normal, but on a daily basis seems like a bit much. An example two days ago was when she missed work and was trying to find some kind of excuse. So she was showing me her conversation with her manager and eventually forced me to find an answer for her manager. She constantly asked me to choose for her and later that day she said that she went to buy some glasses but couldn't choose any for herself and that she would wait until I'm with her or someone else to help her make that choice. And by the way, she always says the word that someone else would come with her just as a means to try and get me to come with her no matter what because otherwise she acts mad and says that she'll just find somebody random to choose for her which never happens by the way but it always usually just falls on me. Another example is one that's happened many times and this happened yesterday. I have a very bad flu right now and I feel absolutely horrible. I told her I needed sleep because I can't move and that we need to cancel our plans of going out to eat. She said oh it's okay but 20 minutes later she sends me a text message asking me if I'm sleeping. I didn't answer because obviously I was sleeping. Then two hours later as soon as I wake up I answer the phone from her and she asked to come down to see her because suddenly apparently she's right by the house which I'm really not sure if this is normal or not. I told her I was so sick and I wanted to vomit but she asked me to at least show up in the window and when I didn't do that she started acting incredibly cold towards me because she came a very long way to see me and I apparently didn't want to see her even though she knows I'm sick and we agreed that I will be sleeping. Stuff like this keeps happening all over the place and this is honestly draining me. I'm thinking of breaking up because it's drama every day and it's exhausting me and at this point I really don't know what to do. Yeah, I can see where this would be super annoying. Not only is she constantly checking up on you every single moment of the day, but she's also being very dismissive of your issues that are going on. I mean, you're sick in bed trying not to throw up and she's demanding that you come downstairs and see her real quick, even though she should know exactly what's going on. That's like really immature in my opinion and that's just not fair for you in the slightest. It's also really manipulative the way she makes you make decisions for her. Like she's an adult woman. For context, she's 23 years old and the original poster is 24. She is fully capable of making these decisions, especially for mundane things like what glasses you want to wear, as well as coming up with an excuse for your manager as to why you missed work. Like it's not that hard to pull it together and figure that out. So hopefully you can have some kind of discussion with her because I totally understand where you're coming from where you're like, man, I think I'm going to break up with her. But hopefully for the sake of your relationship, things work out for the better. And she's hopefully able to see that maybe she wants to pump the brakes and be a little less clingy in your life. Today, I messed up by letting my cat out on New Year's Eve only for it to get sprayed by a skunk. And now I'm living my worst nightmare. I live in a small one bedroom apartment with my six year old cat by the name of Hongo. It's New Year's Eve and with the fireworks and the celebrations going on, he was more hyper than usual and begging to be let outside. Hongo has a history of fighting with other animals as well as causing mischief. And as a result, for the past three years, he has stayed inside, but he was begging to go outside. Like he had this cry and whimper that was so heartbreaking and manipulative that I finally gave in out of frustration and let him out. Then I forgot about him after I dove back into my late night video game binge for the holidays. It's now 5 a.m. and I'm just now getting into bed and I can smell the familiar smell of skunk. And I knew immediately what had happened as 
this wave of panic and regret jolted me awake. Sure enough, on the doorstep is my cat, patiently waiting to be let back inside. But the smell of skunk was absolutely horrible. You literally don't know. It is so much worse than you can imagine. Instantly, my eyes are welling up in tears. And these are not tears of empathy, but a tangible wall of utter stench, which soon after had me sick to my stomach. Before I could even react to this wave of stench on my entire being, Hongo immediately runs to the bedroom and jumps on my bedsheets. There is this physical sensation that comes with this particular scent that literally hits my sense of touch, taste, smell, and hearing. It is so awful. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, what do I do? Well, I'll tell you first what not to do. What you shouldn't do that I did like an idiot is pat down the cat with a wet towel mixed with some pet safe lavender oil. It literally made everything worse. Like the smell of dirty burnt hair, rank garbage water, and body odor that lingers in the back of your throat and tongue, but now with a hint of sweet floral undertone. And right about now, the panic sets in. So I jump on my mobile advice, and I ask the internet, how long does skunk spray linger on a cat? And I was mortified to find out that it could last up to three weeks. So I'm thinking to myself, what do I do? It is 5 a.m. on January 1st in a tourist town. My only real option was to try and bathe this cat. But the problem is, is that this cat is a muscular, alpha male type of cat in my small, tiny bedroom apartment. This is not going to be easy. But here we go. We gotta get this bath going. My eyes were watering so bad that I could barely see. I wrestled with this beast to try and get some kind of bath going while writhing in a sea of stench. And if that wasn't enough, there was blaring music from my neighbor's party that surely would have kept the entire neighborhood awake at 5 in the morning. I literally had to use all of my limbs just to pin him down to try and get him into the bath. I'm pretty sure I ruined every single towel that I own, as well as the bedding that he jumped on earlier. It was honestly such a mess. Once his shower was done, I decided to jump in the shower myself and try and scrub off any remaining stench that could possibly have gotten on me. Eventually, 6 a.m. rolls around, and it's the first sunrise of the new year, and my place smells like absolute garbage. Not to mention the state of my bed, which definitely does not smell any better. So I can definitely say goodbye to me getting any sleep today in the slightest. That sounds like an absolute nightmare. Like, no lie, one of my biggest fears is getting sprayed by a skunk, and I can't imagine what I would do if that happened to me. So hopefully your house can go back to normal, because having a skunk smell in your house and on your cat must truly be a terrifying thing to deal with, because I totally agree with you. That smell's gonna linger for weeks, but hopefully for the sake of you and your cat, the smell dissipates to an extent, and you will finally be able to go back to some kind of normal life. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.